great Scott! If my calculations are correct, you are listening to this before your fantasy football drafts have taken place. I have been to the future, and those that followed the advice from the Fantasy Footballers Ultimate Draft Kit had a spectacular season and with certain many victories. It's almost as if Biff had given each of them a copy of Grey's Sports Almanac. I'd highly recommend heading over to www.ultimatedraftkit.com without any further delay. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Thursday. It's here, baby. August My guys. 15th. <laughs> Got you, suckers. Got you good. I was going to say, like, the My Guys episode is one of the next two, and today we're doing a mock draft. Mm -hmm. Well, there was, I don't know if you followed, Andy, there was quite the hullabaloo on Twitter because both Jason and I were under the impression that My Guys was today. Oh, you actually thought yeah, it was? Yeah, I genuinely thought. So, at the beginning of yesterday's episode, I thought it was. So we tweeted out, you know, the every year we tweet out, giving people a, a chance to guess. You're like, oh, yeah. what are oh, our no, three I, My Guys? I did the same thing. Yeah, but except... You didn't read our tweets when we said, my guy's just tomorrow. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. And then I got a DM from Brooks being like, mid-show yesterday saying, hey, the my guy's show's hey bro, not hey bro. Friday. And I was like, whatever, I got it. I had my timer like to edit my tweet. I, went, I got in with like a minute left, so I changed mine to Friday. So I had mine was saying it was looks, Friday. His was saying Thursday, no. and, the, and the people were absolutely bamboozled. Well, together. they are just um, on the edge of their seat. I am... I'm really disappointed that I didn't change all of our show titles for the entire week to mock draft with a question. Or, I mean, sorry, my <laughs> guys guess. with a question mark in front of it. Is it today? Uh, that, it will be tomorrow. I I tweeted the same thing. People guessing are my guys. And, you know, I gave a big hint about my my guys. Yeah, you basically gave yours away, bro. <laughs> Did people get it? Some people got it, but they're not my my guys anymore. Ooh. Oh, yeah, I did see you. You sent out a tweet of... I said that, you that were changing I things. just said you know sources are telling me that some things may be moving and changing and you know are it, you the source? I am the source. <laughs> I am both sources. Is that allowed? You can be I your think own that source. Is, can yeah. you put out and just like I've got sources telling me that this is happening, but actually you're the source the whole time? Um, that I be, think that happens a lot, Mike, <laughs> from bad reporters. <laughs> I just it looks some injuries. I didn't say it was a good source. Some injuries have taken place. Yeah, and you know, do I? I know that know? like the big decisions in life, right? Like if you decide that you're going to get married, and you decide this is the person I'm going to be with the right. rest of my life, and then your bride gets hurt right before the wedding, <laughs> and you're like, I'm out. <laughs> you're too frail. <laughs> Pivot. Sometimes you pivot is what I yeah, you get cold feet. Availability is an ability. I'm just saying You're out. Like on the Get out the, of here, Tina. In the grand scheme of things, <laughs> the my guy decision is so much bigger than your <laughs> like a marriage. Right. Is is kind of my point. Yeah. So you just gotta make sure you get it right. Yeah, because these ones are for life. <laughs> oh. Any any former my guys you wish you could uh, annul, my, annul the marriage? my wife's. <laughs> there's, there's been a few. There's some exes. Yeah. And you don't want no one to remember? Um, oh, gosh. What? Oh. What was that? Is this uh, true? No. Yeah, that's you a true story. Dude, that's... A, no, 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 no. That's elite. No. Hey, look. you. <laughs> this is true? <laughs> so, oh, my God. This is the worst podcast it, it, read moment. It. No, we'll read it. Well, I, I feel like I can't read oh, it. Oh, I'm reading well, it. Welcome, Foot Clan, to the Fantasy Footballers. If you're new, stick with us. We do get into fantasy football <laughs> content. We try to do a great job at it, but sometimes we just have fun, and we're going to be going up head-to-head -to -head today in the mock draft against our stupid producers. Yeah, ballers v. Deucers. And um, one of them, the, the baby, 
the the Falcon oh, taker. Oh man, he is he is embarrassed. The, the dump truck is about to get exposed here in a way that you will enjoy. Mike, take it away. So I just found this out that at some time recently, Matt, aka the Falcon, aka Poopy Pants McGee, disclosed that he <laughs> previously would he would take a date to an escape room as a as a test <laughs> to see how they like can they handle the pressure can they solve these puzzles because he wants an intellectual match uh, if and if they can't escape then they're he's out, out. <laughs> that's brutal <laughs> you did not pass the test is that what the uh, is that what the story is no it's it's like a wonder for your date they didn't pass the test it's like a compatibility test you know yeah oh, no man. I, I look I, I totally get it man and right. what happens then? What happens if you're the one who can't figure out the puzzles? They leave me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I like the idea that they're in two separate rooms, and when if they don't both oh. come out, at the, I mean, whoever comes out yeah. first is just drives away. Um. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, I, I'm also reacting to some very fresh news that we'll get into. <laughs> that's going to make tomorrow all the worse. Um. Before we jump into it, like the mock draft is going to be amazing today. It's been a while since the three of us got to combine on a team and we get to compete against seducers mm -hmm. and explain some of the process. And we're getting so close to regular real drafts. In fact, I'm in two drafts right now in a, not league of record, but like some other leagues. So it's happening. And um, which means we have like the most recent informational middle of the preseason ADP data to go off of. Um, but I mean, Tomorrow's a big day for more than just the my guys. <laughs> Tomorrow afternoon, we will be bestowing. Yeah, a, a UDK for life will be given away tomorrow afternoon, along with a signed Justin Jefferson jersey. Um, so for the rest of your natural life, you could have championships, which seems like something great. It seems like something I'd want. And the winners will be uh, chosen and announced live on the uh, YouTube channel on, on the live stream. And to enter to win, you just have to have purchased a UDK or a UDK Plus um, before the live stream, which yeah. means if you bought it in the past, you're entered to win. We're super excited uh, to be with you tomorrow afternoon on and, the live stream. And, and hop on the live stream with us. We're going to answer. If you've got a question mm -hmm. for your upcoming drafts, you want to get a direct line to us, hop in, see if you can get your question answered, and then see if you're the winner of the uh, the Ultimate Draft Kit, which um, you will already be a winner if you're even in the contest because you will have an Ultimate Draft Kit. Two things. One, uh, you go to ultimatedraftkit.com to check that out. Two, I have, um, you know, we, we're busy. This is August. This is a busy time of year. And we've got, you know, Papa Josh and the Falcon. He handles, they handle some customer service questions that come through the support channel. I have jumped in here and there, and I did answer one question about whether you could bequeath the UDK. Uh, and and what you was say? the official answer? The, the answer I chose to give in that moment was that, yes, if it is a written will with a feather pin. That's oh, totally you gotta fair. Use, you got to use a quill? Yeah, yeah, you have to use a quill. And and none of ink. that built-in ink oh, no, quill. That is dip. not real. That's a dip. It's a dip. It's a dip in bequeath. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Official. Stamped. We still get to do this show? Yep, we do. Are we good? Are we good, Al? We're doing good, man. Let's um, <laughs> all right. Let's jump into some news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Giants rookie Malik Neighbors, full practice today. This is something I really wanted to see after the injury that he'd be back out on the field this week. In fact, there's a chance he plays in the preseason game. That is great news. Makes you really not concerned of a lingering long-term issue. So however you viewed him before the injury is probably how you should view him going forward. But it's also worth reminding yourselves and ourselves what Mike brought up yesterday of how how difficult it is for a top fantasy producer to come from a bottom so just lots, offense. Lots to think about. Yeah, lots of consideration for, who, for whoever out he there. He needs he needs extreme volume. Which I mean, all reports at a camp are that that is what he is getting uh, in joint practices and everything. So that's that's the hope is that his his talent is so elite and he'll see a twenty eight plus percent target share. And if he gets that, then maybe things are okay. 
Yeah, man. Glad he's back out there. They also signed former running back of the Chargers, Josh Kelly. Yeah, it's probably it's a camp body, I would imagine, because of Tracy's injury. Tracy's injury. And then uh, Jameer Gibbs, what's the latest? We're hearing that he should be ready for week one. Des yeah, I, despite the w kind of wishy-washy quote yesterday from Dan Campbell, the reports have gotten more positive. I, I don't view this as any different to be honest when I when I read the, the 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 full reporting it felt more like they were taking the quotes of we think he's going to be fine to just say he should be ready by week one so I I'm still holding my breath I was trying to remember when you were talking about neighbors and how bad the Giants were and just the fact that like they were a f the Bengals when they drafted Chase were a four and 11 team or a four and well that was also coming off of the like, math didn't add up there but yeah, no, I, they, they were a bad team, right? But that was also the year. Was that when Joe Burrow was coming? Yeah, they off went of ten and ACL. Seven. They no, I think. It, 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 Let me look that up. It was. Um, it was just that the team changed from being one of the worst offensive teams very quickly. And yes, Burrow was a piece of that puzzle too. We don't have the Burrow in New York. Christian Kirk minor calf injury to Christian Kirk. What do we think about that? He's uh, not a. He's not a spring chicken. You don't like to see it. Um, it's also been interesting in preseason. He hasn't necessarily been in two wide receiver sets, so I'm starting to get a little bit more worried about the – like I, I have loved drafting Christian Kirk because of the perceived floor of just being like he is the clear-cut number one target for an offense that, you know, I, I don't think it's going to be a, a, you know, a top five offense, but it should be it should be pretty good. It should be a top half offense, and if you've got a clear number one late in drafts, but if he's not on the field in two wide receiver sets and he's dealing with a minor calf injury, I've bumped him down a little bit. And on top of that, uh, Andy, your boy, uh, Brian Thomas Jr., had, like the drum beat has been – it it started off pretty rough for him, like the, the, all the reports, but in the last yeah, it was week, quiet. week to two weeks, it has really been escalating that he's he's starting to figure it out. He's making plays. He's making people look silly. So I'm um, – he was already in that – in the spot of – I'm good taking a rookie wide receiver here, no matter uh, like what their situation is, because the ADP is good. It's where they used to be, right? <laughs> like the late, late round picks. Yeah, the risk reward was was usually a fantastic scenario. Now we got these other guys who are way up there, but but Thomas is in an area where I think you should get some exposure. Yeah, it, it seems similar to um, kind of a a cheaper Green Bay Packers situation where you've got like. I think Jaden Reed, the better wide receiver, but you worry about the ceiling versus Christian Watson, a complete unknown. But you go, the athleticism, the traits, that one period where he scored touchdowns at will, that's like if you want to take the the you know the rocket fuel chance, that's Brian Thomas Jr. All right, Matthew Stafford, you hate to see this because it, 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 the fragility of the Rams' fantasy prospects it's always right in your face with Matthew Stafford, and he did not finish practice. Uh, McVay said he was experiencing hamstring tightness. Wait, it was I thought it was his back. No, 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 it was hamstring. Okay. And McVay just said, yeah, unfortunately, it tightened up on him. You don't like to hear this. Um, just because the prospects of the entire, you know, Cup, Puka, Kyron, mm -hmm. take, you know, if you take... It's a massive hit. I mean, if, if, if Stafford misses time... Uh, maybe later in the season when Jimmy Garoppolo comes back from suspension, okay, they've got a serviceable backup. As of right now, I believe it's Stetson I Bennett. He was suspended right. for BEDs, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, that guy. You don't get that handsome naturally. What happens when the drugs don't enhance your performance? They must be enhancing your looks. What about like neutral <laughs> performance drugs? Are those legal? Yeah, those are vitamins. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would honestly. I swore I saw something about back yesterday. Maybe I just quick, quickly re uh, quickly read through it. Back is way worse to me. Like if Stafford has a back issue, then I'm gonna that'll be red flags. If it's a hamstring, eh, I'm okay. I have not seen anything about a okay, back. I, Deucers, if you I'm no, no, it was I read the thing directly from McVeigh. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm saying when it initially came out, maybe and again, uh, maybe I just read probably just read Probably just last yeah, night. Yeah, that's dreams. not good. No, J.J. McCarthy. Underwent oh, a full meniscus repair out for the entire season. This stinks, man. For for Vikings fans, for JJ McCarthy, for I mean, and JJ McCarthy comes out looks awesome in his first preseason game. Yeah, he, he leaves that game. You know, to my knowledge, 
he wasn't injured. It was just wow. I'm so happy wow. with his performance. He looks great. He's gonna he's gonna take over for the sacrificial baby even earlier than expected. And then all of a sudden he's out for the season. It it, it certainly changes things. Um, yeah. What's your what's your take on Jefferson? And I get when we got a lump Addison in here as well. Let's just combo that news because he right after the JJ McCarthy news came out. News broke. Jordan Addison just went down uh, trying to sky up for a ball. Ends up getting carted off, and it's holy crap. You know, you never want to hear carted off, but that has been turned into – it's just a, a minor ankle injury, but it's still an injury. So where are you at just overall with the Vikings offense? Because this is big stuff happening. I would not be surprised if it is neutral to positive – for the wide receiver crew, even though J.J. McCarthy looked great. He's still a rookie, and rookies don't throw a lot of touchdowns. Now, I don't think Sam Donald's going to yeah, throw a lot say, of touchdowns. Yeah, I was going to say, let's let's just bring it into the uh, – like, D.J. Moore was not um, a weapon with Sam Donald, right? Like, I mean, this is – I think we have – you can see it go either way. Like, we have different views on this because you guys both kind of of the opinion. And I like your point, Mike. You said this uh, on a social post yesterday – you will have consistency. You will not yeah. have this period of the season, which is annoying where you're like, are they going to make the change? Are they not going to make the change? Like if you get some trends with Sam Darnold, at least you know that that's what you're going to continue to get. Mm -hmm. But I don't like it. Holy I, I personally think that JJ McCarthy is uh, uh, going to be a better, higher ceiling opportunity for these players. Yeah. So. Long-term. I definitely agree with that. that. What we know though, is at least last year, and yeah, look, Kevin O'Connell teams, they throw a lot. Even when Kirk Cousins went down and they had quarterbacks who were quality of backup to backup, like these are third string guys out there taking starts for the Minnesota Vikings, they were still throwing a ton. So at least efficiency, it might struggle with Sam Darnold, but volume will be there. Um, what do you got going here, Jay? Yeah, I mean, you know, something I probably should have looked into even <laughs> earlier. <laughs> but it, look, we're we're live here, and we're 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 doing it live. I didn't remember because we've had two years off from Sam Darnold, who was a very highly drafted prospect, and people have still believed in, and they've said, you know, he's 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 a a, a good backup, and he's going to be fine as a starter. He was the starter right now for the Vikings already. I forgot how bad he was. Here's his touchdown because I'm like, okay, rookies are going to come, and what are they going to throw? Are they going to throw for 20 touchdowns and ruin your fantasy output? Here are Sam Darnold's career um, passing touchdowns. Rookie year, 17. Sophomore year, 19. Then the next two years, he was still the starter, didn't play the full seasons. I'm going to give you his 17-game pace, a full season pace for those seasons. 12 and 13. Full season pace on passing touchdowns. Yeah. So, Andy, you're 100% right. Like, Yeah, it's, it's a concern. It's a real concern for me. Whether you throw the ball a lot, we saw Sam Hell. They threw the ball more than anybody in football. Did that make Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson, those guys no. super weapons? And Sam Howell wasn't a super weapon in fantasy either. I mean, volume, yes, Kevin O'Connell throws it a lot. But I want skill and talent. Oh, and yeah, But this is what we've got. And depend of, Yeah, no, it is now. But I, I would not be shocked at all if Minnesota, now that they know that McCarthy is out for the year, if we don't see a splashy – veteran name arrive on this team not named Josh Dobbs they're gonna go out and sign Matt Ryan oh <laughs> P River <laughs> back out of retirement I don't know about those but I I think somebody in the Matt Ryan somebody in the Winston let the bet live Winston and the uh oh Jameis go get him oh, baby Jameis yeah I'm I, you know that's a great name don't forget Sam Darnold saw ghosts on the field before get Jameis out there man let him throw for 5K again. Let's do this. That I would be excited about. So, look, I'm sorry, Vikings fans. Yeah. It has not been – it's not been great as of late. And um, it, it it even further concerns me about Aaron Jones. Just from an offensive perspective, all the stuff yeah, you yeah. highlighted on yep. the top ten tips and tricks. Yeah, I mean, the Minnesota – when I was doing that study of uh, looking at bottom ten offenses, trying to project them anyways, it's – it. It's hard to not put Minnesota in there, and that was before the J.J. McCarthy injury. They just they were like a fringe team where I didn't like they could surprise. I think it'd be middle of the pack, but 
bottom 10 is in their range of outcomes. All right. There's been a lot of news, a lot of little injuries. Also, Chuba Hubbard and Tyler Lockett, both dealing with injuries not considered to be serious, but pay attention to those. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. We are going to take a break and come back with a live Deucers versus Ballers mock draft. All right, we're going to dive right into it. And a uh, quick reminder on the other side of the break, uh, we will be live in Los Angeles for our 10th anniversary Megala show in less than two weeks. Tickets available at ballerslive.com if you're in the area, if you're Much uh, less willing to drive to the area. Yes, I mean, Sleeper is presenting yeah. this show, and they're doing this mock draft. Get out there, ballerslive.com. We want to see you. There you go. I want to I give you a... The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. I mean, I, I, I put a period. It sounded like you put a period at the end of your sentence. It was a pump fake, man. I was, I, I, that's on me. It was, a, it was a fake handoff. I no. was dropping back to pass, and I got sacked. You did get sacked. That was, uh, that was unfair. You, I, I think you were going to say that you want to see them there. I was going to say I want to <laughs> give them a fist bump. Okay. But, you know. That's a good good toss in. Yeah. Um, Important. And one. <laughs> All right, we are diving into a live mock draft here on this show. Taking on the Deucers over there in Deucers Valley who uh, look like they are super prepared. We've got the Falcons smirking, Al with a, kind of an unsettled confidence, and then... I think, is that um, a scowl from Papa Josh? A scowl from the... It's hard oh, to not from the Al. It's hard to tell over the shine. He actually doesn't know what's going on. Um, <laughs> we are... Jumping right in, it's a 12-team half PPR mock draft. We're gonna we're gonna spread it out wide. Trips We've got three wideouts, two running backs, one quarterback, one tight end, one flex, four bench spots, and uh, we randomly selected some spots. We ended up at four. The Deucers at pick eight. Okay, away we go. Tyreek Hill goes off the board first. I don't mind it. No, it makes a ton of sense, especially in three wide. C.D. Lamb also makes sense at two. Is Christian McCaffrey going to drop to us? No. McCaffrey's off the board at three, and we are on the clock at 104. And, and you know, you're going to have to reorient your mind. We are not enemies. We're not mortal enemies I on know. this show. We're actually friends. We We're get to... friends. We need to draft a better team than the Deucers. That's obvious. That's easy. Well, you know, just be careful. So, obviously, I think uh, – I, I assume we all agree this is a three-way decision, not between us, but between three players. You got Bijan and Brees at running back. And you got Jamar Chase at wide receiver, right? The, that's who we're looking at. Is there anyone else in the conversation here at four? I'm always fine with somebody considering Amon Ra in the same conversation as Jamar Chase, but um, yeah, but we don't have to do that. Uh, Mike, where would you like to go? The man with the, the there still is elite wide receivers on the board, and have in having to play three, it changes things. But, man, playing hero, running back here, I think is the direction I would start this. I like playing hero, running back. If you don't know what that is, hero, running back is a version of zero running back where you do draft one of – if you get one of the studs, one of the heroes, which basically this year right now feels like only three options, Christian McCaffrey, Bijan, and Brees, then you're going to go away from running back for a while. Load up on wide receivers or even your onesie positions – um, I, I think that's a good strategy in a three wide, um, because you know, you still need running backs, but, uh, it, it's tough. I, I mean, to me, I'm between, I, I like Bijan more than Brees and I love Jamar chase in a three wide. So if you don't want to have that strategy, if we, yeah, I'm, I, I'm fine that, with chase here. I, yeah, Mike and I are on the Brees side. You're on the Bijan side, but we're all on the chase side. I yeah, think no, I don't know if it makes a difference. I'm looking at like you know, sleepers picks their week one lines. We got uh, Jamar Chase at 83 and a half receiving yards. Bijan at 71 rushing yards. Get off to a hot start. Does that sway you towards Chase? I mean, uh, that doesn't, but I'll tell I mean, I was, I was already swayed. I'm, I was pretty oh, swayed. So yeah. we're, we're chasing it. Yeah. yeah we'll go. Oh, chase. God. I love it. Oh, we'll go chase. Swish. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> um, Ty goes to the runner. <laughs> Jamar Chase at one Oh four. B. John Robinson goes off the board at 105, and then Jefferson and Amon Ra 
Uh, I have seen Jefferson rising in just anecdotal. My participation in mocks and real drafts, I have seen Jefferson going he, up. He is brutal. I don't mean as a reaction to the Darnold news, just in general, even before that happened. Um, He's the best wide receiver in football. Yeah, it's, it's yeah a, that's a good headline for and him. And I, I believe it's a bad pick. I really do. Uh, the, there's so there, I know that he is. When, he, when does he become a good pick? Like the one-two turn, maybe. Uh, I, I, I guess really, it's it's a matter of who he's going ahead of or behind. Like I would never take him personally ahead of Amon Ross St. Brown or AJ Brown. Any of the Browns? None, none of them. Yeah. Well, Hollywood, I would definitely take oh, him ahead. Okay. So yeah, I guess, yeah. I guess we 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 can't do that. All right, the Deucer's on the clock here, and um, I don't know who's going to be the like the project leader. You know, when you're in school and you got to do the project with a group, but then somebody has to present. Uh, with, which one of the deucers is making this pick? We're going to start with me. Okay. Uh, well, that's We were hoping Amon Ra would fall, but he did not. He went right before us, so we're going to go ahead and take Brees Hall right here. Yeah, you got an easy layup of a pick. That stinks. Are you going to have a way to kind of... Are you going to disclaim all of our picks? Yeah, I was going to say, you're going to have a way to like make all of their picks kind of like uh, in invalid? If I, if I need to, but I think they're going to do it themselves. All right, Brees Hall off the board. Uh, it was an option for us. I think if we had gone running back, it would have been majority rules on Brees there. So you get him four picks later. A.J. Brown goes next. Jameer Gibbs, Jonathan Taylor, Saquon Barkley rounding out the first round. In fact, that that is another trend I am noticing is the Saquon above Kyron situation. Uh, I'm seeing that a lot. Garrett Wilson starting the second round. Puka Nakua. ETN and then Marvin Harrison at 204 here. I'm never going back to the past okay. That is uh that that's, is a deep cut. Uh um, going back to the NFL draft when our Arizona Cardinals that's for Marv drafted Marvin. I love Harrison you, Marv. Jr. And Mike uh, exclaimed that he would never wear pants again. <laughs> he was that excited. So not going back to the pants store. Well, you you didn't get him. I know. We didn't get him. No, I'm celebrating that the Deucers did not get him. Fair enough. Uh, the Deucers are back on the clock at 2.05. Brees Hall in the first round. What do we got going on? What's the thought process? Also, who are you drafting? Uh, the thought process is a, a lot of the guys we were looking at went off the board. Um, so we're obviously Kyron would be a great pick here, but we don't know that we want to double up on RBs in a three wide receiver roster. So I think we're going to reach just a touch and go for Christopher Olave. Or is it Christian? Christian. Oh, Christian. It's Christian. Christian Olave. Olave. No, he drafted Christopher Olave, who is a <laughs> postman in yeah. Nebraska. You don't want to mess with the postman. Uh, Drake London goes next. So Brees Hall and Chris Olave at uh, your first two picks. Oh! Drake London. <laughs> Drake okay. London at 206. Derrick Henry at 207. Kyron at 208. That's Kyron. Almost fell to 209. That that would have been our layup pick if Kyron had fallen since we went uh, wide receiver and, and grabbed Jamar. Uh, Kyron I, is still in that next tier of elites to me. Obviously. I still think there's a there's just one pick jumping off the page to me. <sighs> um, we went chase. I thought we'd be okay. Now, we're going to have a quick turn. We're going to come right back. Mm -hmm. But to me, there's like there's one guy. I agree. That I believe should be drafted here. I agree. I know who Jason wants. I don't know who Andy wants to pick. Devon H. Yeah. Oh, baby. Oh, okay. That is who I want. Yeah, the that 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 would be the pick for me. Now, just to lay give you a lay of the land at wide receiver, Devontae Adams is still there. If Adams was there at 304, I think that would be a strong pick in a three wide uh, in terms of value. Debo, Ayuk, those guys are there. We've had a lot of wideouts go off the board. Kyron would have been a neat steal here. But I'm I'm no, comfortable put, with HN. No, put HN through. That's yeah, fine. I I have I have made the transition to being fully comfortable with him as my running back one. It is risky. It is a gamble. But you're you're playing to win. You're not playing to to just you know be a decent team that maybe squeaks in the playoffs and and loses week one. So HN, so far so good on the like um like you know we're agreeing with yeah. one another and, I'm, and I'm, no. dude, I got my golden ticket. I'm oh, ready. Boy. If 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 I need to sway you. Yeah, I've still got a golden ticket good for one free Andy Holloway agreement. Well, just make sure Mike's on your side for that. Otherwise, it's going to be a real waste. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to waste your golden ticket. Chase and A-Chan, our first two selections, drafting from the fourth spot. The Deucers have Brees Hall and Chris Olave. 
Travis Kelsey goes next off the board at 210. A little bit early for where I would be comfortable taking that shot. 100%. Um, but Jacobs at 211, Adams at 212, Josh Allen, the first quarterback at 301, Ayuk and Nico Collins. Um, we narrowly avoided Mike hard selling us Nico Collins at 304. I feel like it would have been an easy sell. If Nico was here, that probably would have been my pick. Now, we just had a tight end episode where I said I was comfortable with Laporta at the 301. This would be the 304, just bringing it up. I know you guys are not going to be on board for that. I'm not going to push you too hard. But um, I don't mind that advantage at this point in a draft. I might mind it a little more in a three wide, though, where you have an extra spot to fill. Yeah. And that does change the equation. So I'm, I'm not going to push there. But at running back, looking at names that I know we have some agreement on, Pacheco, James Cook, Joe Mixon for some stability. I talked yesterday about dynamic duos. I'm not sure it gets better than the Mixon H and combo as far as a floor and ceiling floor and ceiling running back duo. And then James Conner still there at wide out. We all like Debo. We have him ranked very high and he is way below where we would have him in terms of what mm -hmm. running back or uh, wide out off the board. Jalen Waddle, Mike, you're a big fan. I am. The, the question becomes, are you good starting with H and and Jalen Waddle? I was really hoping Nico no. would, would drop so we didn't yeah. have to make that decision because I, I get it if you don't want to overload with the Miami Dolphins with your second and third pick. Uh, I do like Debo, yeah, that's... And, and I get the three wide, but right now I would, out of this group, I would push for Isaiah Pacheco. So the, I mean, you just named him. So it's it's to me it's Pacheco or Debo Samuel. I love both players. I think both players are undervalued. Um, being the fact that we are in a three wide, I think that would tie break for me for the Debo side. I love Pacheco. I I, I would be one hundred percent fine with either one of these guys. Where do you have Pacheco? Uh, I I'll have to look that up. He's okay. I think he's about ten, nine or ten. He's in my top ten, and Debo is outside of my top twelve wide receivers. Consensus wise, Debo is our wide receiver seven. I was Whoa. gonna say yeah, we just Whoa. did that show. I remembered he was at seven. Yeah, we have him very high. Mike, you have him very high. Yeah, I'm at, yeah, you've got him at 13. Yeah. I'd have got him at 9, Andy at 9, but that consensus-wise puts him up because there's a lot of disagreement on the wide receivers at this point um, in the draft. Well, uh, let's play this out for the sake of the audience, what I think the two outcomes could be. If we went with Debo Samuel and we felt like we needed to come back and stabilize the running back position, we're probably going to be in the James Conner, Ramondre, Swift category, maybe with a chance at Alvin Kamara. Okay. If you flip it the other direction, we go Pacheco. You know, you're probably talking about Cooper Cup, who I like. Um, Michael Pittman, a stabilizer. Um, Devontae Smith, Tank Dell. Um, okay. DJ Moore. I don't want to take Dink. Take Dink. I don't want to take. Take Tank. tank. We're, take Tank. You don't want to take in tank? the fourth. Not. I'd rather take him at five hundred four and take okay. that shot well, at ADP. But. All right. But anyway, so, so, so. I will say that so that is a really good thing to do if you're listening and you're trying to decide between a running back and a wide receiver. Look at who's going to be there next because that convinced me to switch to the Pacheco side. I feel like I like those wide receivers wide a out. lot more than those running backs. You guys want to do that? Yes. Okay. Pacheco off the board. I'm loving this team. Jalen Hurts goes 305. Sam Laporta at 306. Uh Okay, Mike Evans off the board. Deucers are on the clock. Brees Hall was the first round pick. Chris Olave, their second round pick, and I I can see Jason shaking his head because he thinks that the Deucers are just gonna quick draw on Debo. Yeah, but but uh, I don't no. know if that's a no. Okay, they Maybe, did. Yeah, they did. Yeah. yeah, they took Debo Samuel. Um with we, no no need to explain. Waddle was our other guy we were considering there. Yeah, I mean it it it's good. Your your team is actually I mean, I don't want to compliment anything you guys do. Um however, it's it's working out very well. The fact that we were considering Brees Hall at the the one oh four and you got him picks later, and we were considering Debo at the three oh four and you got him picks later, you're you are you are getting good value. Now you guys had you guys seven, must listen to our show a lot. Uh, yeah, I mean, I hope. Um seven wideouts have gone off the board. One thing to consider when I was playing out both scenarios was the fact that three wide, more wideouts might go. Cup is gone. Um, Waddle's gone. DJ Moore, who I love, is gone. And then Diggs and Neighbors. So, Deucer's back on the clock. Um, I think I've given them enough time to make the wrong decision. 
Yeah, I mean, they don't need a lot of time to make a dumb pick. Um, it, it, the, the truth is, I'm still, I, I, I'm still happy with several wide receivers. I mean, I'll say that, and then it will all be wide receivers. But there's a handful of guys I really like here. So I'm, I'm, I think we're set up okay. All right, what's your pick? Trey Ooh. McBride, baby. It's, it's funny. They went Trey McBride, and I was, um, was going to bring the name up if he got back to us as an as a option at 409. Chase, Achan, and Pacheco are first three off the board. Oof. Jason is looking around. Tell us what you're thinking. Is, <laughs> is this because James Cook made it back? Uh, no, that that is interesting. But uh, he's looking around because he Tank wants Dell. to take Tank Dell um, as our wide receiver too. You mentioned earlier, Andy. You want to play the ADP game. Wait till the fifth. What we've seen in this draft is because it is three wide receiver, not the two two and a flex. It's three two and a flex, where the wide receivers have all been pushed up. You know, you talked about uh, Michael Pittman or Cooper Cup or Devontae Smith making it back to us. None of them did. And there's six picks between our next pick, and we're currently with one wide receiver. So, to me, we've got to take a wide receiver Mark here. Andrews? Uh, I mean, I, I think the value is – Dalton Kincaid? Is there, but if you look at – yeah, you've got two good tight ends, and obviously both could go to team one and team two. Team three already has a tight end. So, we could end up with either one of them at our next pick at wide receiver – there's Tank Dell and T. Higgins are, are really the only Amari guys Cooper. left. Cooper, yeah. I, I, I've i cooled on him a little bit, but i I, I got to remember how hot I was for Amari <laughs> Cooper this offseason. <laughs> well, you've cooled, you but you were, you were really hot, so what's your temperature? Is it still above average? Like, it's, are you yeah. feverish? It's like a it, – I, I Low think grade? some people call it a low grade. It's 99.9. .9. 99.9. I would not call that a fever. fever. Thank you. It's not. Some people say that's a low grade fever. No, no it's not. You just be tougher. Do you feel good? I feel totally fine. Okay. I got a little bit of the sweats. Uh, uh, but most of my sweats are for that's Tank. That's normal. Are for Tank Dell. The, I mean, this draft is working out well for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, I like it. But what do you guys think? Here? I mean, you can go Tank Dell and come back with probably Alvin Kamara in the next round if you wanted to. Or one of those tight ends. Mike, I, I have it's, not heard from you. I need you to weigh in here because – Jason's sure. got a, a low grade fever, and I don't trust what he's it, saying. It's it's tough that Tank Dell would be my highest ranked wide receiver that I would be going with. The fact that James Cook, you have him ahead of T. Higgins. Uh, let me just double check. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, T. Higgins should probably spot. not be a consideration for a Chase team anyway. It, right, right, right. Uh, I'm I'm good with with Tank Dell, but the the fact that James Cook made it back is. I know it's three wide, but having A. Chan Pacheco and James Cook, all guys who I have a strong conviction can and should finish as top twelve running backs, that it's it's hard to bypass that. With Cook being here in hindsight, I would have rather taken Debo and then come back with James so, Cook. Right. But, but for we, sure. But we didn't. And if I compare Pacheco and Tank Dell to Debo and James Cook, I'm just as happy with that. I, I would take Tank more. Dell here and then see if we get lucky with Cook or Mixon or Walker or Kamara coming back to us. If, if James Cook will definitely. If not we're sitting here though and saying that wide receivers are going to go off the board more often, there's a chance that we get uh, Andrews and Kincaid off the board, and a quarterback, and a uh, a wideout, yeah, which right. would make I'm, it I'm a fun game. All right, let's Yay! let's give it a shot. Uh, after Dell was James Cook, yeah, that Zay was a Flowers, Joe Mixon, T. Higgins, Kamara, and then Stroud. So we are back. If we want to go running back, we've lost the names I really liked. Ooh. Ken, Cook, Ken Mixon, Bone Walker still there, guys. Yeah, Cook, Mixon, and Kamara. I mean, Ken Walker's great. Uh, Amari Cooper's still on the board. It is three wide pickings. Um, yeah, and you, and you have both tight ends. You could take Mark Andrews here this in the is fifth probably, round. This is probably time to take Mark Andrews. I, I think so. I, I've talked about I like leaving the draft with one of the top five. Mark Andrews is, I think, two of our number two tight ends overall. Um, You've gotten guys that you like, though, Jay, so I'm going to let Mike make the pick, and he can decide if he wants Ken fair. Bone Walker or Mark Bone Andrews. <laughs> Who uh, did you guys see? Who was in a, a wreck? Yeah, I a did. car accident. yesterday. And they said the wreck was really bad, and yet Mark Andrews supermaned it, like, uh, like when Cam, Cam Newton, Newton yeah. flipped the truck and just walked away. <laughs> so hopefully Mark is actually okay over there. It's your pick, Mike. I Man. I don't care what you do. 
I'm yeah. I'm gonna officially say I don't care what you do either. You don't care what I do? No. You you live your best life. Yeah, okay. K B dub. I lied. I lied. <laughs> I was really wanting Mark Andrews there. Ken Walker. I need board people to get on board fifth. with Ken Walker. He's going to be great. So you took him as kind of a lead the parade. Yeah. Well, Kincaid, Pickens, and Andrews went the next three picks, which at least, I mean, I guess the Deucers already had McBride, so we weren't going to hand off Mark Andrews to them. But the Deucers have Brees Hall, Olave, Debo, and McBride. I so just, I'm guessing that they're staring down that running back spot, but maybe not. Maybe so they like the value. Looking at the decision for us, like between Walker and Mark Andrews, I, I hate that I hate this section of wide receivers. Like – I, I get it with Amari Cooper. I The numbers make sense. The, the numbers 100 make sense, and the offense should be good. And yet I still don't really want to draft Amari Cooper. And Keenan Allen has got the got a rookie rookie quarterback. And Kirk's got his injury, and Terry's got a rookie quarterback. It, this section of wide receivers is – And Keenan it just feels – He hit 300 on the scale. He yep. did it. He yeah, hit 300 he pounds it. on the scale. That is the dumbest storyline of my <laughs> life. I watched the second episode of Hard Knocks. Kian looks totally normal. He wasn't eating the whole time? He was not eating the entire episode. Was that episode brought to you by Five Guys? In fact, <laughs> if, if you know who was eating was DJ Moore. He was at the ice cream shop. Mad props to DJ Moore. <laughs> Mad props to DJ Moore. All right. It is really stupid. We're going to take a break and then come back with the Deucer's pick. All right. Uh, hopefully the um, you know we Man. iced the kicker by taking the break. You know what I mean? Like too overthinking. Like I think there's a chance. Way to call timeout. They there. go Bucky Irving here, but um, Deucers, what are we doing? Bucky. Amari Cooper. That makes sense. We, I mean, we are riding super dirty here. Uh, wait, 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 wait. What? That's your fault. No, I know. I want a Debo. Oh, I, I know. I'm just saying. I uh, wanted that Andrews. We are. we are. Well, Andrews is not a wide receiver. Nah, when we fine. said we didn't care, Mike, we cared. We're, I, I think we're okay hmm. on, on wide receiver. Maybe you should use your words out. better. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We cared to have somebody to blame. Um, Amari Cooper, then Keenan Allen, then DeAndre Swift, Aaron Jones, and George Kittle round out the fifth round. And then uh, James Conner. Always a little sad when he goes because you always – I always like to grab me some James Conner late in drafts, but we're already three running backs deep. Kyle Pitts, Anthony Richardson at 6.03, and David Montgomery off the board. The Deucers with uh, three wide, Olave, Debo, and Amari Cooper. Trey McBride at tight end and Brees Hall at running back. They have adopted, Jason, the hero RB strategy thus far, and they are back on the clock at 6.05. And um, Will they keep it going or grab a running back? Let's find out. Like we now. are going low T on this one, boys, and we are taking Jaden Reed. Okay. Wow. Okay. So you you really are using the hero running back strategy, which I think in a three wide receiver league is a great strategy. You you can load up on some uh you know later running backs who you know guys like Jerome Ford um, who might be able to get off to a, a strong start, and then you pick up waiver pickups to fill in those running back positions. It, it, it's it's a strategy that can definitely win a league. After Reed went uh, Ramondre, McLaurin, and Kirk, and I uh, – Great. Fantastic. I know exactly who the pick is. You know who the pick is. Yes. I'm curious if I know who the pick is. There are two players in my mind uh, that I'm paying attention to right here. Um, yeah. There, and you th should know one of them. There's a few. One of them for you is going to be Calvin Ridley. Then that's what the pick is. That's, um, that's let me just, my vote as well. Okay. I'm, and then I'm hopefully fine. coming back with Kyler. Uh, okay, maybe, but I was – okay, the fact that we could take either Kyler or Burrow because Burrow stacks with Jamar Chase. Okay. And I think that that would be wonderful here. That was just kind of the tip from so yesterday's even, episode. Even a better situation because you can wait. And two of the three teams between us have quarterbacks. So even if they take Burrow, we go Kyler. If they take Kyler, we go Burrow. All Let's I heard was draft Calvin, Calvin Ridley. <laughs> Ridley. Yeah. Calvin Ridley off the board at the 609. Nice pick. Uh, Worthy, Harris, oh. Odunze, okay. Pollard, Ingram, Godwin, and now we've got a problem. Yeah. We, <laughs> it's a good problem to have. Well, the the bigger problem for me, honestly. <sighs> Are there some – like Rashi Rice on Rasheed, the board? It's Rashi Rice. Yeah. Because yeah, at that spot where we just took Ridley – I would have been very happy ADP-wise to get Rasheed Rice on the squad there. The reason I I didn't 
even approach it is because we had Pacheco. So it was, well, let's balance out. We, let, let's try and get the Tennessee offense. See if, if they have anything to give us, it will be from Calvin Ridley. But now that Rice is back and then and just push the quarterback spot back. I, Joe Burrow getting the stack you know what? here I'm would a, be – I'm on that side now, I yeah, think. I, I'm, it would be I'm great, but Dak is still there. Jordan Love. Jaden Daniels uh, yeah. late. There, there, are, there are other options. And, and because we went with Kenneth Walker, I feel like – you know, loading up on wide receiver and a three wide receiver, I'm going to be very happy with that. There's plenty of quarterbacks that are are good later, and and maybe we could still do a stack um, with one of them. I oh <laughs> bye bye. Um, we went with uh, Rice, Rice, and then Moster went next, and then Burrow and Murray went back to back. So and, and I think that which I love because I I know the Deucers yes, were going to yes, take one of those two for guys. Sure. Oh, and they're all nodding yes. profusely. We good. literally were down to three guys, and it was those three guys. Oh, it was Moster, Burrow, and Murray. Yeah. Excellent. I love that. I mean, it, it worked out, of course. Sometimes playing the game, you lose. But with not taking Rice at the 609, like you, he still has the suspension worries. That, that will be a looming factor, I think, for most of the season, unless you get an official report that everything of the court case has been – everything's pushed back. If you get that, then you'll have the all clear. But him as the wide receiver four – well, and then Ridley's the three. I mean, that uh, that worked out sensationally. All right, the Deucer's back on the clock. I've given them so much time. There's no way that if I hand it over to them, one of them's not going to talk into a microphone. So who is the pick? Uh, that didn't feel like a lot of time. <laughs> but I think we're going to go ahead and uh, lean on my homerism and take Jordan Love to stack with Jaden. Wow. Reed. Okay, all right. Whoa. Uh, hey, Jordan Reed. Uh, Get your guy. Jaden Reed, Jordan Love. Is a, is a back-end stack that I, I like putting together, so I, I don't mind that at all. I also think this is a this is one of the reasons why it's really fun to do the draft the way that we're doing it, the three of us versus three of them. You know, we've talked so much about the ADP comparison tool, different platforms, different systems. Jason talked about stacks. Like, they could have gone a different quarterback. There were several by ADP that might have been higher, but – they went with the guy that matched up with the player they just took, and you're going to see some a lot of variation in your drafts exactly like that. So, um, might have been a bit of a surprise to to Jason, but fit the fit the Deucer's desires. Yeah, I don't mind it at all. After Jordan Love went, Zamir White, Brock Bowers, absolute steal at seven ten. No, not really a steal. <laughs> okay. Not really a steal. Like... Um, but I, I'm excited about him. Addison Moss. Deontay Johnson, Dak, who unfortunately I was kind of yeah, eyeballing as sure. a hopeful uh, selection later. Hollywood Brown and Jalen Warren, and the Deucers are back on the clock right now just to give you a lay of the land and give them a, a moment to decide. Still riding dirty with Brees Hall all alone, but then Olave, Debo, and Amari Cooper and Jaden Reed at wide out. That's super strong. Trey McBride snagging him in the fourth, and then uh, Jordan Love with the bag of money in the seventh. I one of the things I love is that like they they load it up and they've got four really good wide receivers, and I like our wide receivers much more, and we have three awesome running backs. So good job, guys. We got there. Yeah. Uh, in the wise words that um I tell my toilet deucers, eat it. <laughs> Uh, you was that enough time? Yeah, we we had enough time. We're gonna go ahead and take our RB two here in the eighth <laughs> round in Javante Williams. Uh, okay, all right. That's that's right. that is a that's a good hero RB pick when you get a guy who is going to have opportunity and there is the the narrative the path of healing from that injury two years ago where maybe you're getting you know a, a top fifteen running back in uh, the the later rounds. You got to take that shot. I I don't I don't agree with the bet. Like I. I think they're going to be a really bad offense, and he's going to be what he was last year. But it's, it, it, I probably would have taken the same running back here just for the potential. Uh, after Javante Eckler went, which is before Brian Robinson, who I thought looked has looked good in preseason, is definitely the guy over Eckler to me. So Brian Robinson going behind Eckler is interesting. Chubb went off the board in McConkey. Um, just to give a lay of the land for our roster, we've taken three wideouts in the last four picks. There are five selections remaining, and one's going to need to be a quarterback, one a tight end. Um, both feel like positions we could wait on mm -hmm. right now because I would say our eyes are on um, po Goff, possibly. Daniels. Um, the, the tight end room, which the teams between us 
and our next pick, two of them have a tight end, but uh, we're down to David Njoku and Jake Ferguson as players were like happy to okay, right. But I think in the ninth round, that's where those guys belong. That's you know, what we, we say. Do we wait one round and yeah, take absolutely because left? because the, we don't expect both to go off here at this turn. So I wouldn't take a tight end here. And we, and we you discussed on the tips and trip tricks episode uh, yesterday about those. You know, those like seven, seventh, eighth round tight ends don't usually work. You want to get a value. I, I like if we don't get one of those top guys, it needs to be a ninth round pick or later. So, yeah, here. Um, Two, there are a couple of rookies, Keon Coleman and Brian Thomas mm -hmm. on the board. At running back, there's some starters, Devin Singletary and Brian Robinson, along with Gus Edwards potentially. And then you mentioned wanting to see more Tajay Spears that you could pay attention to down in the draft. This um, is this is any really other tough. names we should be thinking about yeah, there. It, I it's a tough scenario because I we're at a point now where I really like a lot of wide receivers of upside. Coleman, I'm still in on Christian Watson, Brian Thomas, Jackson Smith, and Jigba is like JSN. Is, man, it's the, the he is such a tough player. Of the the excitement for him in his rookie year was through the roof. And you did not get any of the, you did not get anything back for I mean you you bought a yeah, ticket yeah he played but he didn't come with the excitement that thing was a zero percent on Rotten Tomatoes you hated what you were watching well, and, I, but not necessarily his fault so it's just you uh, remembering you know oh I was I was hot for Amari Cooper do we need to remember that we were hot for JSN yeah and um. Uh, I I don't think we mentioned it in the news, but Tyler Lockett is dealing with a leg injury. Mike Mc, McDonald said, "Oh come on, let's see if you can do it." Mike he McDonald uh, said that uh, the issue isn't too serious, but we don't we don't have a lot of information. But that is a path for JSN it to be, to rise. Yeah, I I don't mind that pick. Um, it'd be awesome if you had like a little index card that had four like McDonald's McDaniel's pictures, Dude, and you could just hold it up and say which one you mean. It, that's what like I cheat need. Sheet? This guy. The, like a Mick cheat sheet? A Mick cheat sheet. <laughs> because between the Seahawks head coach Mike McDonald, the Dolphins head coach Mike McDaniel, and both the singer and actor Michael <laughs> McDonald, my brain is And mush. you didn't even mention former offensive coordinator head coach Josh McDaniel. Don't do it. <laughs> and you didn't even mention a 20 piece chicken McNuggie. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Which, it is. Sweet and sour. Some yeah. of us conflate coaches with. Uh, chicken. Yeah. Um. All right. So, so what do we want to do, I, 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 Jason? You can take the pick. I'm, I'm in on one of those wide receivers. Yeah, I, I, I'm on the wide receiver side too. I don't care which one. Thomas, it, JSN. When when deciding, I'm take I'm taking a look at our current wide receivers: Jamar Chase, Tank Dell, Calvin Ridley, Rushy Rice. I think they're all really really good. I want high upside. I I think Jackson Smith and Jigba is a great pick. So right, that that would it. be my selection. Jonathan Brooks goes next in Purdy. Ferguson, Coleman, Hopkins, oh. and Watson. Now, based on what Mike just said, guys, I lied. Well, no, I mean, I, I lied. If I I wanted Jake Ferguson over oh, David. Oh, because you, you didn't want David to joke. Okay, <laughs> I I see those guys as as so similar. I I don't mind them. Do you want to take Najoku here? Yeah, I, I think that makes sense. He's kind of the last one after him. You're punting all the way down to Pat Fryermuth, who would be my last pick, like my last round pick, and I'm fine with that. But I do think Najoku is is a tier above. All right, we're getting down to the end here. Singletary and Robinson and Edwards, the starters, back to back to back. Those are the only players I was really considering over Najoku. Just adding more depth to the running back room. Sure. But we took Najoku and those guys went off the board. The Deucers were probably considering one of those three as well. Is that true? Yep. You can't nod. We're, they can't hear you nod, Josh. I, I'm just <laughs> disappointed. I you wish the camera was on because he's like he's was, profusely nodding. It was and a sad nod because we wanted Gus Edwards right here, and uh, he literally went the pick before it got to us. Well, so. then take Devin Singletary. No. Well, he's you already can't. gone too. <laughs> taking the, we're taking the upside guy. Tajay Spears is off the board for the Deucers. Uh, seeing some more quarterbacks go: Caleb Williams, Jamison Williams, Brian Thomas, Tua. And then uh, starting the 10th round, Goddard, Benson, Sutton, Zeke. Deucers back on the clock uh, after the hot wide receiver run uh, that they started the draft with. It's been Love, Javante, and Spears trying to fill in those back-end running backs to accompany Brees Hall. 
So you are back on the clock at 10.05. You have all your position players. You can do what you want. We're going to go Chase Brown. Yeah, okay. I, I like that. In yeah, fact, when Zach Moss went off the board at 7.12, I made a mental note to kind of keep Chase Brown tucked away. We ended up Chase with – Chase doing a – He's Are doing you a, going drum solo or maracas? Maracas. All right. Yeah, okay. Doing, All right. I, I will explain his dance. Also unable to be picked up on microphone. I can do it. Good. Thank you, Mike. Lawrence Hawkinson and Goff went off the board. That was his Jaden Daniels dance. That is my Jaden Daniels dance. Yeah, dance. I mean, when you look at the quarterbacks that we're, – we're drafting very, very, very late here on quarterbacks, and you're just getting – you're getting, hopefully, a Kyler Murray rookie season here when he was with Cliff Kingsbury, finishes the quarterback seven. You know he's an accurate passer. He's a great runner. He is a wonderful value. I would have taken him over Caleb Williams around before, over Trevor Lawrence. I personally would have taken him over Jared Goff, both good options. So, yeah, I, I love that we waited and got Najoku and Jaden Daniels in the ninth and tenth round while loading up on studs at running back and wide receivers. Had this been a, a live you know, a, a live draft, which the the computers sometimes get crazy with their second quarterbacks. If if we could have waited this long, got Jaden and then Jared Goff on the way back out, mm -hmm. I would have been all about that. Now it is interesting. Like no consideration has been given to Justin Herbert, who is now drafted in the eleventh okay. round, and I just think that's worth a conversation because Caleb Lawrence, Goff, and Daniels, there is not. It's it's, it's a decent chance Herbert. Is just fine and fine for fantasy. Could be. It's. it's I mean, the, it's the combination of not only the offensive concerns that we've had for the whole off season of knowing that the Chargers, while they should be a higher scoring offense, there it'll be very high T combined with his injury pushing him down to here. All right, we're back on the clock after the Daniels pick. We can do what we want because we are. Uh, we've got our onesies taken care of. We're at five wide receivers on the roster. There are some names that are interesting at that position. You could, uh, you know, Curtis Samuel with his opportunity in Buffalo. Adonai Mitchell seems to have an opportunity with injury uh, in Indianapolis. Khalil Shakir. Where where are you guys real quick on the Buffalo wide receivers? I take Shakir over Samuel for upside. Because I have uh, – I've been the offseason of Curtis Samuel. I'm trying not to let just one preseason thing completely sway, but – it looks like it it might be Shakir over uh, and, and this is I'm leaving Keon Coleman out of the equation. I'm saying between Curtis and Shakir, I think I may have switched to I'd prefer chasing after Shakir. I'm He's got still, a higher yards per catch, which and in this offense with the extension of the play. Sorry, Jason. No, no, I, no. Th that's why I would go with him. But Jason, what do you think? Yeah, I, I'm still very much in the belief that Curtis Samuel is okay. better than than Shakir, who will be more involved. However, the type of player that Curtis Samuel is doesn't really make sense for our roster. We're loaded at wide receiver now, and we're looking for high you know, potential. So, you know, Shakir makes probably more sense for our roster build than Curtis Samuel, who's just like a veteran plug-and-play. The one thing I'll point out, we only have three running backs. Um, so There's still a starter available. There are studs. I'm curious who you think like the starter. Like a full starter. A full starter. You're talking about Chuba? Yeah. yeah, Chuba is the starting running back for Carolina. He was the running back, I believe, nine over the back half of the year. He's injured right now. Right this second he is, but they said it was not serious, and Jonathan Brooks will not be playing to start the year. Just I, throwing that out I there think because – to start the year, though, he wouldn't be in our lineup. That's right? where like We've got I, I A-Chan and Pacheco and Walker, so he's not going to crack our lineup until later when Jonathan Brooks comes back. Later, you might see someone like Rico Dowdle. I know Mike's hot yeah. and bothered for him in the sense of taking over – for a really high-powered offense in the Cowboys. So, like, I would rather go that way for our build personally. I would be – personally, I would, Dowdle would be the guy. Uh, but it would go – for me, it would go Dowdle, J.K. Dobbins, and then Chuba. Both of you disrespecting the Chuba. I, it, 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 it's everything Jason said of this is – I want a player who – Jonathan Brooks is not going to go – week five, he's not the, the, the no, full-time running no, back No, but it's, it's after – once he's back, is it just now a mess of multiple running backs? Just like all offense. the other guys that you were saying. Uh, but I think that they – But for a bad offense. The, you, you're choosing between the Panthers right. or the Cowboys. I think that there's a chance for both Dowdle and Dobbins by the time a couple weeks in the season have, have passed that one of them, you can tell they are the guy. It, for like To break it down for the listeners here, it, it, roster construction really matters. 
for our team that has three stud running backs, I would much rather take a, a guy who could have something happen, break out later, um, you know, like a Rico Dowdle. If I was the Deucers team, I would prefer a Chuba. I would, uh, you know, you're, you're looking to yeah, you pick need, up people off the waivers later, but you need starters week one. Well, they'll get their shot. I took Dowdle for you, Mike. And then and Adnai just, Mitchell goes at 11.05, Charbonnet, Curtis Samuel with the Deucers back on the clock. And real quick to put a bow on that, the Carolina Panthers' opening schedule is the Saints, the Chargers, the Raiders, the Bengals, the Bears. Like, this is – that's going to be tough for the running back. All right, Deucers, you've got two picks left. They went with Khalil Sukir. Okay. Fryermuth, Jacoby, Komet, and Mike Williams rounding out the second to last round. And then Joshua Palmer, I was going to bring his name up, but, sure. but I did not. Uh, Chuba goes at 12 – O two, 2 Kirk Cousins, Kendra Miller, and the Deucers have a final selection to add to their roster, which they will be doing in just a minute. <laughs> be with you in a moment, everybody. You can make the pick, Josh. This is why this is why in school they make someone <laughs> the leader of the group. Right. Because if they all do it, no one does it. And Take Josh your pick, is Josh. still not taking his pick. Take your pick, Josh. Second. We're going Jalen Rice. Oh, that's, that's a good find. That's right. a really good pick. I, I would, like it. I would like to have this last pick. I don't care. Go ahead. Uh, Jalen Wright off the board. Aaron Rodgers goes in this round. Dobbins is gone. Jason, you I'm gonna, can. I'm going to take a guy that we all believed in going into last year and no one believes in going into this year. But if Jaden Daniels has a great season and is a, a, a really good quarterback, which is our quarterback, and you're well, drafting for things well, to no, go right. Well, don't don't click it. Just, I don't like it. Just hold just, on a second. Hold on. Who is? It's Jahan Dotson. It's Jahan Dotson. Did you see? He played too much preseason. We just way too much preseason to feel good about the Dodson. Dodson, we've got Dodson. I here. was I was actually more encouraged by what was happening in the preseason for Dotson, and then literally this morning there was another report of Washington still looking for their wide receiver too. It's not good, dude. It's not good. Like that's it's your I'm, pick, but I'm not look the last round pick. That's he played the guy, like the whole game or something. Your last round pick. You're hoping that you know week one immediately because the, do I have something here or is this the guy I get to cut for the week one waiver superstars? Okay, well, so, I, I got to make the pick, so all right, I'm, go I'm ahead. taking it. Dontavian Wicks. Yeah, okay, I'm in. <laughs> I'm back in, baby. I, I love Dontavian Wicks. I, you know, when you're at the last round, That's scroll down. Production. Scroll down further and make sure that you're looking at all the names. All right, why don't you run our team back for the listeners, Jason, and uh, one of the deucers that can play paper, rock, scissors D while you read it and figure right. out who's going to read their team. So at quarterback and tight end, we've got Jaden Daniels and David Njoku, happy with those late-round options. At wide receiver, Jamar Chase, Tank Dell, Calvin Ridley, Rushy Rice, JSN, and Dontavian Wicks, loaded with six of those guys. And then at running back, Devon Achan, Isaiah Pacheco, Ken Bonewalker, and Rico Dowdle. I love our team. I like that team. Oh, yeah. All right. I like, um, I like this team. Oh, we'll let, oh, I, I, I assume Al's going to read the team back here. Yeah, I'll read it here. We got, <clears throat> excuse me, Jordan Love throwing the football for us, Trey McBride at tight end. We've got Brees Hall, Javante Williams, Tajay Spears, Chase Brown, and Jalen Wright at running back. And our wide receivers are Chris Olave, Debo Samuel, Amari Cooper, Jalen Reed, Jaden Reed, and Khalil Shakir. All right, you can weigh in in the comments if you're watching over on YouTube. And um, if you didn't know, as we wrap things up, if you didn't know, in addition to being the number one fantasy platform, Sleeper also has DFS picks, and you can download the app and use the code BALLERS to get a 100% deposit match. Terms and conditions apply. Head over to ultimatedraftkit.com. Get in on our UDK for Life uh, giveaway, which will take place on the afternoon of my guy's day. For Which real. is this week. It is one of the remaining episodes of this week. I will say that. I will tease Thank it. Thank you. And then next week, we've got breakout sleepers, bus, values. Uh, we got a new segment next week called Take Swap. We're going to give that a shot. And uh, the Megala show live in L.A. on Saturday of next week. So uh, you can get tickets at ballerslive.com. That'll do it for today's episode of the show. Thank you to our fine producer team that drafted while um, making sure this show goes up. So appreciate it. Goodbye.
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.